So this is another another casual night uh, in Toronto doing the Healthy You conference. Find health and life balance in your life with Qigong and other techniques. So today we have a uh, let's say an old friend, you know, that's been uh, around over twenty years. You know, is that we met uh, in in the Qigong class. So and ever since he's in my Qigong class with Master Wu at the time, that this man has never left. So he's always been around for years and years. Uh, it must be almost 20 years roughly. So it's really um, quite a journey that we know each other for about 20 years. So we do know each other quite well. So we know what kind of person he is. So of, of course he's like a Qigong instructor and he can do healing work. And then he is, he, he is actually quite, technical person, he's actually a car mechanic too, and then he has four licenses, I remember that. He, he told me he has four licenses of the car, and then he can use his ear to listen to the engine of the car and can tell what's wrong with the car. Anyways, my car has some issues too. It's in the downstairs. So the next thing we know about this person is, um, he actually loved nutrition so much all his life, uh, that eventually he actually went to the school to study nutritionist. So he is now uh, like a holistic uh, nutritionist uh, certified. And then after that, his life keep on evolving and then he get crazy with the plants growing out of the farm really. And then he, uh, I, don't, I would like to use the word crazy because you know when you put all your passion in, it's almost that day in and day night you're there. You, you sleep there, you eat there, you, you just do anything there, it's really all the passion is there. It's just amazing how passionate you are, Gary. So this person's name is Gary Thibault. So he's written a book called um, Five Weeds, Five Trees, and Five Tools. And then we also are uh, really going to have a good evening talking with him, right? Absolutely. So what would you like to start talking about? What questions would you like to ask me? Um, so why are you so crazy about doing nutrition? Could be fun, I think. Well, 20 some years ago I started feeling really terrible and the medical system really didn't give me any answers after a couple of years of testing. And so I started uh, reading through medical books and looking at uh, the protocols of the medicine and uh, because I'm Aboriginal from this country, uh, both sides of my family, uh, I, my grandmother and my mother's side started teaching me as a little boy about plants and natural medicine and I never really used the information till I got sick and I started looking at answers and how I ended up meeting Teresa was I started looking around for uh, master, Kung Fu master, and uh, going to the New Year celebration, the Chinese New Year celebration, it happened to be beside um, the automotive thing that was going on that particular year, downtown Toronto, and I went in and this lady gave me Master Wu's card, and uh, I didn't know he didn't speak any English, and I waited a few months actually, the card sat by my phone, and one day I just happened to call and Teresa happened to be there and translated for me and I was invited to come and study some Qigong and right away I noticed I could create energy and I understood what was going on in the class very quickly and even though I couldn't speak any Chinese um, there was people in the class that would say you sure you don't speak Chinese because I would ask questions that were quite open-minded and technical yeah. in their brain yeah, he has a lot of questions. And uh, I asked a lot of questions and, uh, you know, I, I learned. I know, and, you learned too from your questions. And yeah. I thought I was a pretty good student. Um, we love you. Master Wu and I understood each other quite well, even though we couldn't speak the languages, oh, well. we understood. But he likes you a lot. So. And, uh, you know, yeah. I carried on practicing, but I went to school and studied nutrition formally yeah. and uh, then I dived into blood analysis and 
actually knowing what's going on in the body from looking at the blood I studied with some of the best in the world yeah. and bought my own microscope and I do that uh, on a like full-time part-time basis now and uh, that's why I bought a property closer to the city of Toronto even though I have lots of land way up north where I was raised uh, I um, am very passionate about picking the plants myself, drying it myself. I even made a drying room in my barn. I've got a phenomenal facility now that I can actually do pounds and pounds of material at a time. And uh, I teach people from around the world who want to come and learn. Uh, actually, actually learn to be healthy. Um, on top of that, I was blessed, I guess, that there was a movie made about me called Free Living 101 uh, by a uh, a raw food person in the States, even though I'm not a raw foodist, uh, I believe in eating a balance the way nature does and by season primarily because that's the way you really become healthy. And uh, I love what I do. I don't do this for the money factor, even though I do make some money at it. And I found from experience if you don't charge for your time something, people really don't appreciate you because they're not investing in themselves. And as long as they're investing in themselves, uh, I'm willing to teach them and um, you know I don't know what else to say about that but I do love what I do and I really wouldn't do or change anything any differently yeah. than what I do. Thank you. So I'm gonna uh, help to bring some uh, information to the audience you know. So uh, this guy uh, Gary right so uh, I would say that he's really cra uh, used the word crazy is really perfect because he really put 110% effort in the things he does, right? So uh, so one of the things that uh, you, you may think is um, crazy, but then he would one day uh, decided to stop his Qigong practice for moms. And we don't know, he just studied from us every day and then decided to experiment. Uh, what if I don't do Qigong any, anymore and what was going to happen to me, right? So that was like, uh, at the beginning, uh, that was a nice experiment. So after he did his experiment for a few months and, and I let him explain what happened, and then he came back to tell us what he has found. I think that's an interesting story there. Well, yeah. yeah. If I can remember it now, that's... I know. Yeah, it's that's been really, so long ago. I know. I, just, I don't know. It just came out. I was not even... It just came out as I was talking. It was someone told me to... Well, so I, do, I do lots of experiments because, I don't know, as a little boy growing up in my parents' household, my mother was um, a very good student of biblical text, and my grandmother carried the Bible everywhere, and so my mother would point out to me if I was bored, I would read the Bible because I would learn some wisdom. And so, you know, one of the things the book teaches you is to prove all things. So the best way you can prove out anything is do a proper experiment. Do something, yes. then stop doing it for a period of time and see what type of results you yes. get. And then you know, you know the actual difference. And so, you know, even though I stopped doing Qi Kung, uh, my mental thought and training to breathe properly and everything is still built into me now so well that I do breathe 100% in my gut just like you were born. Everything in nature does that. Uh, nothing in nature breathes in their chest. They all breathe in their abdomen. And uh, that's one of the things Qi Kong teaches you is to breathe properly. And most people don't understand that the breath of life is basically breathing properly because it, that's how you detoxify the body and that's how you oxygenate the body and the organs by breathing properly. And without that technique from studying Qi Kong, uh, you really don't advance because your body is designed to work a certain way and most people uh, don't follow what's intended in nature. It's all around us. So all the old masters, yes. you know, looked at animals and looked at birds and yeah. all the styles of Kung Fu or Native Indian wrestling or any culture yeah. you look at, they, the old people noticed things in nature yes. and they actually applied it to their life because they saw you know, that's the way everything yes. else is doing it, and why am I doing differently? Yeah. So, so, so the, the journey is like when you felt better with the Qigong, so he also stopped to see if that made him terrible. So after it's proved that he just know it worked, right? 
And then I remember, I remember you, if you don't remember, I, you said this to me. You know, I used to need my wife to rub my back every night. <laughs> and then ever, ever since I've done Qigong, then I don't need that. I remember that. That's remember true. That? <laughs> That's true. Uh, the energy work and Qigong really helped my spine and everything else. Uh, yeah. But also at the same time, I did change things exactly. nutrition wise. Yeah. Uh, you know, Einstein said the definition of insanity was doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. I mean, he also said the greatest invention uh, in the world was something he didn't yeah. invent. And somebody said, What was that? He said, Compound interest. Yeah. So that's. <laughs> So, you know, you have to, <clears throat> when you look for knowledge, you have to look for knowledge from every location yes. and appreciate all things, right? Yeah, there's many things about uh, energy work that happened uh, before. But the thing is, the interesting is how one person is being led uh, from finding the balance uh, emotionally and then, then we actually go and develop their own passion, which has been sitting there for ages. And make a decision to just gonna do it finally. So and that's I think that's always sometimes I say the Qigong offers some courage because we feel more balanced and hopeful. And sometimes we might just go and do the things that's sitting on the back of the mind for a long time. So the nutrition has become a big part of uh, Gary uh, right now, and then he. Uh, he has written a book too, right? What's yeah, the name of the, the book? Five, five Weeds, Five Trees, Five Tools, A Way to Self-Sufficiency and Good Health. Exactly. So, mm, and then I, I also know that you, um, so there was a time that you were really, um, really focused on um, talking about the life cell microscopy. So yes. is that still the same passion there? I do. Uh, I. I'm getting so busy doing that. Um, I don't even advertise it online anywhere. I don't even I don't even tell people most of the time that I do live blood analysis with a dark field light field microscope. And I'm still I got people from around the world coming to see me because I'm getting the results that most people just don't even expect because I teach them how to really change what they're doing. And I show them how their blood and their body is actually talking to them, but they're not listening to it. So our gut is our third brain. The largest part of our nervous system is our mind, our brain, and then our spinal column. And then the, the next third of the largest part is around our small intestine and our large intestine. That's where uh, the nerves are. And also our lymphatic system, our drainage system is here as well. So. When, I, when you teach people how to breathe through Qi Kung, I point out that if a person was singing a note as a singer, and I have three people in my house that sing extremely well, my wife and my two children, they're gifted. Uh, you know, when people sing, they can't hold tension. And you cannot control your chest bones, but you can control your muscles in your stomach and actually allow them to focus your breath. So the same thing, when you actually breathe here, you have to automatically relax and balance. You cannot hold pressure and, and negative emotions when you breathe in your gut. You, you have to release it. And most people just don't comprehend that. So actually, when you actually sit down with somebody and you start to teach them just basically how to relax and breathe in the beginning of the Qigong exercise, even without teaching them any formality of the exercise, actually teaching them about the breath and yes. how it's going to benefit them. Yes. And they start practicing and you even just instruct them, just do it one minute a couple of times a day because in the beginning, your muscles and your body are not accustomed to it and you, we don't want to do damage to you so we want you to relax and just learn how to relax and breathe properly and as they practice now it starts to become the norm in the mind because you were born this way breathing that way but we get taught by society and people around us to stand up straight stick our chest out and breathe up here all these sayings that have been told since you were a little kid are actually negative to what you actually see in the environment. So I'll point out to anyone, if you look at any animal, whether it's wild or domesticated, it has a much larger chest and a small waist. But when you look at a dog laying down, you only see the center part of their belly moving between their legs. Cats the same way, fish, everything, chickens, doesn't matter what you look at. But they all have a bigger chest. When you look at most human beings, they have a small chest and a large waist. 
well, what's going on? If we take 20,000 breaths, according to the medical system, every 24 hours, if we're moving the stomach muscles, breathing properly 20,000 times, that's an equivalent to 500 sit-ups. I don't know too many people that can do 500 sit-ups. But I can prove standing up right now, I can hold my body weight against anybody's hand, and my voice will not change, and my core muscles are as solid as the floor. Yet I don't do any exercise. I just stretch and I breathe. So how is that possible, right? It's just possible by proper technique. When this moves 20,000 times in a day, it's equivalent to 500 sit-ups. Yeah. Gary has already incorporated uh, Qigong as his lifestyle, so it's not completely trying to uh, do a form anymore. He just adopted something very important in his life, and he's becoming a farmer too. So he farm, he work hard, and then he has chickens and... Uh, I have my own bees. Yeah, exactly. And then you, you teach people how to take you, you to have their own herbs, how to grow their own plants. I teach people yeah. how to preserve stuff, how to dry it as well yeah. properly, uh, out of the sunlight, in yeah. aerated a place in the shade. Exactly. You don't have to have fancy tools. You just have to use your mind. Uh, yeah. Just busy. Yes. Uh, so I do a lot of just things. Busy. And I'll just give an example for, you know, when I shut my automotive business down uh, seven years ago and Isn't decided to buy this farm. The best mechanic around shutting off this <laughs> Well, I didn't, I didn't eliminate it, but I had, to, I had to move my location and do stuff. So, you know, I took all of the money that I had made and I put it against this farm. So I made myself hand-tied, handcuffed, and broke because I wanted to eliminate mortgage. And so in order to buy material, I took jobs on construction sites as the cleanup guy. And basically, whatever was going to go to the garbage, you got free material, plus I got paid to pick it up. So, you know, people don't... You see, when you apply yourself in, in uh, any area of life with some basic good principles, and don't think negative about anything, think positive. The glass always has something in it. Uh, there's always opportunity. Uh, you know, if somebody brings you a horse, you don't open its mouth and say it's got no teeth, well, the glue factory will use it, or it'll still have life to it. There's always an opportunity, no matter what you look at in life. And so, I think my philosophy and being positive also comes from the fact that I'm breathing properly, practicing Qigong. It's not that I practice anymore every day. I can do all the styles. He, you know, he, it's in my brain. Uh, I just had one thing is... He also created miracles for his, uh, his, for his children in the family and helped them to do Qigong and change their life too. So he's, he really helped uh, your family big ways. I, I agree with that. You know, yeah. like, I mean, my youngest daughter, uh, you know, um, had a seizure when she was basically almost two. And it was uh, from an allergic reaction to what they spray on those little tangerella oranges called warfarin. Uh, which is Coumadin, and if you look on rat poison at Canadian Tire or anywhere else, you'll see that's one main ingredient. And they use it as a blood thinner, but it doesn't actually thin your blood, it just makes it slippery, makes it slide. And um, I've proven that out too, but <laughs> the medical system doesn't like that, neither does pharmaceutical companies like the truth, because they're making money. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I, uh, you know, ended up in Sick Children's Hospital with our youngest daughter, my wife and I, and um, because I was practicing on a regular basis, I put my hands up and I was giving my yes. daughter energy. And basically by lunchtime, she was eating soup with a cup and a spoon. And it was an English doctor from England who was interning at Sick Children's Hospital that really noticed that he was just like, he said, children would come in with a febrile seizure. Uh, like, it's a couple of days or a minimum 24 hours before the parallel the parallel sides by side of the body she was paralyzed from her feet right to her neck on her left side and it was gone within hours and by lunchtime she was eating normally and everything yeah. and they were this doctor was the only one out of the whole team that was asking he was just kind of throwing out something but he didn't know what I was doing or what was going on until uh, later in the day when uh, because my wife's background, she had a small epileptic problem in her life, but her cousins always had more serious things. So the doctors suspected, you know, it might be epilepsy. It's related because that was her my my wife's background. 
had that problem when she was small. And so they wanted to do a CAT scan and they did this CAT scan and uh, basically, you know, they put your kid up knocked out cold with a huge syringe and too much chemicals as far as I'm concerned. And so I was actually giving her energy to help her recuperate from the anesthesia. And I was concentrating so hard that I didn't see the nurse walking and I used to watch the two-way mirrors if you're in those little rooms, you know, the, there's yeah. one outside so anybody outside can see in the room, right? Yeah. And when the nurse came in and said, what are you doing? I, I actually jumped off the floor. <laughs> and I said, well, I'm just giving my daughter energy. And she made a comment that she didn't believe in that kind of stuff, but her husband did. And I told her, well, I can change her heartbeat. And so she said, prove it to me. And you can't make a lie statement when your daughter's hooked up to a tow monitor and the monitor's right there and you can see every pulse. So I put my hands up and within seconds, the monitor crashed. I mean, it was like your TV at four o'clock in the morning and there's no channel. It was the static was just coming out of it. And the red light started going off. Everything was, and doctors, you could hear them running. And there was this doctor that came in through the door. He was like a football player with his head as red as a, a tomato and five other guys behind him. And Anyways. what's going on, what's going on? And I had pulled my hands down because the nurse said, pull your hands down, it's a medical emergency. <laughs> and my older daughter, because there's nine years difference, she was like 11, she jumped from the bed and I put my hands out to grab this nurse and she was wobbling around in a circle. I thought she was going to hit the floor. She said, I'm okay, I'm okay. And she walked through the, the, the doctors and she looked like a, an old Hitler movie. She was walking like, you know, with the hands and feet going back and forth and they were questioning her. But for the rest of the day, nobody came into the room. Not one doctor came by, except that English doctor would walk by once in a while and he would look at me and say, how's she doing? And I would just go like this and he would just keep on going. Yeah. And so at the end of the day, the, the scans, and this was a Christmas day, the chief officer of that doctor from that scan department came in. He came from his Christmas dinner and he <laughs> looked at the things and signed the paper and he said, see you later. <laughs> and that was it. And so a few weeks later, she had another minor seizure, and uh, we just laid her in the Chesterfield and it went away, and it was a year uh, later before it happened. But in the summertime, because they had almost convinced me that it was something to do with a virus, when she did get a cold in the summertime, my wife and I took turns for three days watching her temperature, and nothing happened. But the day after Christmas, a year later, she had the exact same problem. She went like comatose, sleeping, and we went to Sick Children's Hospital. They checked her out, and they said, oh, it's just a febrile seizure. But I said, well, why is her skin, and I asked them that the first time, why does her skin feel like she's on fire, hot, like you're touching fire, yet her body temperature, according to you, is normal? Nobody would give me an answer. And my wife and I, the second time in the hospital, we looked at each other, and we instantly both said, it's the oranges. It just came out of our mouth so unison, it was like mind-bending. Because we'd written down everything. And the only thing that happened once a year was she peeled those little oranges. Oh. And okay. soon she peeled them, it would take a couple of months before the, the effect of the chemicals in there would absorb with the acid and she would eat the orange and she had this reaction to it. Oh. And we figured that out. And so... That little girl of mine is 19, uh, she's a brilliant student, just finished Queens one year, going to be a school teacher, speaks three languages, uh, won the Lieutenant Governor's Award for the most volunteer hours in the province of Ontario. She speaks the sign language now, she took American Sign Language as well. Oh. She's a really uh, a walking genius. And, uh, you know... I taught her really well about planting and harvesting foods. We did uh, Qi Kung with her when she was kids, a uh, young kid. Uh, she actually, when she started school, she couldn't see out of one eye. I don't know if that was because of the seizure that happened before she started school or not. And Master Wu helped uh, teach us and he put energy into her eye. And a couple of weeks later when we went back and actually had results from the same eye doctor, she could actually read the cue card. And that was within two weeks. And so we practiced, and she has vision in that eye, but she basically her body doesn't use it. It's like, I don't know, they, they can't find anything wrong with it, but her body doesn't use that eye. But she can still see 
Like if she closes off her eyes, she can see your hands, she can see whatever, but it's not clear. So, my oldest daughter had a seizure in her face, Bell Palsy, and basically Master Wu worked on her and he taught me what to do and press. And within, I don't know, a week, when she went back to the clinic, when she was in grade two, walking in, the doctor said, she don't need to come here. So, and they wanted to know what we did, and my wife said, oh, she went to a Chinese guy and he just did some acupressure. We just fluffed him off because people, unless they experience some of the things that I've experienced and done through energy work, qigong, and nutrition, uh, most people would be very skeptical, but firsthand. And I've got people from around the world that have actually come and seen me and adopted my principles and followed my advice and they're living in their own places now, disease free in every respect. I've had people call me from YouTube videos from their hospital bed and doctors saying they would never make the flight to Toronto, they'd be dead. And they're still alive five, six, seven, eight years later and they can't find a single thing wrong with them. So. Everything outside teaches us, but most people are bent on a magic bullet and they don't want to change their way of living, change their life. They're stuck into bad habits of poisoning themselves. And it's actually that simple. It's not complicated. So you, so you have given us a lot of good tips. <laughs> so there's a lot of learning here. Uh, practice Qigong. And at least move your abdomen. Yes. And uh, do something about your nutrition and walk on your gut. You can you can see the how sl slim he is, right? So when I first met him, he has something, right? But now he's slim because he was. I used to weigh two hundred and thirty eight pounds. Yeah. And most people would never believe it when they look at me now. I weigh about one sixty on average, and I've stayed that way for eighteen years, steady weight now. So. So Gary and I, we are of the same age, actually. <laughs> I think I'm older than you are. Well, I'm September, uh, the rooster year, so I think you are Aquarius. I'm an Aquarius. So yeah. maybe you might be a couple months earlier than me. So well, I'm I'll September be, and Aquarius. Maybe, okay, maybe well, I'm months. 61 and, uh, and a half in June, so I, because I'm born in January, but yeah. uh, I'll yeah. be 62 next year in January. Exactly. So and and so yeah. when I turned 60, I actually went around and I said, "What's 60 supposed to feel like?" I, know. I don't know That's what I, I don't. Okay, you know, I get up in the morning, and even if I went to bed like last this last exactly. week weekend, I think last week every night of the week I got to bed at two o'clock in the morning, even though I said I was going to try and be in bed by nine or ten. Yeah. And I was up at six the next day. Working the whole day, yeah. like, so, and I'm physically exactly. working hard, so, physically yeah, hard. He does a lot of physical work. He has a farm. So there's no kidding. He has plants to do, have chicken to take care. Do you have a dog there? We have two dogs at the house. Yeah, the two dogs too. So, anyway, so this is how you look uh, when you are 60. <laughs> the same years. So this is the the practice of uh, eating a little bit better than other people. Well, I tell people, and you know, look at my skin and people. show me people that are in their 60s that don't have, you know, I don't have really any wrinkles to talk about, you know. Good job. So good job. It's what you put in your body is what you get out. I mean, you wouldn't fix a car, putting scrap parts in it. You wouldn't build a house putting junk material and expect yeah. a good house. Nothing in your life would you expect putting crap in and expecting, you know, it's like the old saying says, uh, you know, you're going to build a silk purse out of a sow's ear. So would it doesn't I, exist. Would I, uh, be, would you mind, maybe we can ask you, uh, what do you eat for breakfast first? Well, to understand, first of all, uh, before I get into what I eat, we have to understand the basic makeup of the human body. So if we took 100%, as a circle. We're 72.6% water, just the way the earth is. So that's la that leaves 28.4% left over. So the solid material in our body, out of 28.4%, 80% of it is actual fat. Then out of the leftover, there's 20% that's actual protein, and the rest are the fruits and vegetables that make our fiber by seasons. Okay, so. 
you need to eat a pretty high fat physical fat, like proper fat. I'm not talking, you know, um, French fries and uh, garbage fat, okay? So people need to understand that you shouldn't be eating cooked oils. Vegetable oils and tree oils need to be eaten raw only. When you cook them, the it's oscillation changed. of heat going up, you actually create a trans fat. Because our body does not run at 300 degrees Fahrenheit, and even at 100 degrees Fahrenheit, we run cooler than that. We run at 98. So at 100 degrees Fahrenheit, when electrolysis occurs in a metal pan, you actually move a hydrogen atom out, and when the oil comes down, it becomes a solid trans fat. It comes like pork fat, or it comes like certain animal fat that's hard. And so proper animal fat is good for you as well. So I average, I eat four to six eggs a day, four a minimum in the morning, sometimes six, sometimes five, depending how I feel. And I always fry them in real butter, easy over, and lots of butter. And I make a stir fry of vegetables, uh, even though I will eat potatoes on a regular basis almost the whole year, uh, the potatoes will never be made the same way. So there's all kinds of other herbs and spices that I will dry in the summertime that I'll use in the wintertime, and certain fresh things that I will, uh, like for example, if you put garlic in a plastic bag and throw it in your freezer, uh, garlic never dies. When you take it out, it's still alive. It never dies. Even onions are the same way. You can freeze an onion, take it out solid, put it in the ground. Within a couple of days, you've got the green shoot coming out. Garlic is the same way. So it, it, they never die. So certain vegetables like that are always life-giving at any time of the year. And so it's combinations of stuff. So when I sprout mung beans or different types of beans, I will actually eat some of them fresh and I will sprout cook with them as well. So even though they're sprouted, I will throw them in my stir fry. So I'm eating this variety of vegetables with my eggs at breakfast in the morning and a cup of tea at the end of my meal that I actually pick the plants and dry it myself. And tea made specifically for my, what I need to do for me. And then lunchtime, it could be anything from a salad to with a piece of meat or fish or chicken. Uh, not a large amount, uh, but it could be a salad or it could be just a salad. Uh, for example, I can't eat commercial bread of any kind. I can't touch any kind of ice cream or milk from the stores. And there's no way. It doesn't agree with me. It doesn't work for me. It poisons me. Uh, there's a, I don't know what they're doing to it to cause that problem, but there's something being modified. So if I make my own bread, I can digest it no problem. If I make my own yogurt, my own kefir, uh, and from f fermented goat milk, I have no problem. So. Uh, I'll have a moderate lunch like that, something with vegetables or, you know, a stir fry or a salad. And at the end of the day, I tend to eat more cultured foods like a, a kefir type yogurt, homemade. And I pick my own wild blueberries. I go to certain farms to pick organic strawberries. I freeze them. And uh, uh, a, 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 a yogurt thing will have some flax seed in it, sunflower seed, maybe some almonds in there. It will have bee pollen, a little bit of raw honeycomb the way honey should be eaten with the wax and everything else. You should eat the wax because most people don't understand that uh, when a bee makes a, a pound of wax, they have to eat two pounds of honey to do that. And there's so much density in the wax, when you burn a wax candle made pure from a beehive, it actually emits vitamin D just like the sun. Most That's why a wax candle, a pure wax candle from a really good hive smells so different that everybody notices it in the room. It just does something to the air because it's actually emitting the same color of lights that the sun does and it, it emits vit the vitamin D range, one, two, and three. Most people don't understand that, but that's a fact. And so bees don't go and take out of nature what they don't need, but what they take out of nature and create for them is life-giving to you. And so, you know, there's many examples in history, including in the Bible. Samson was guaranteed to be the strongest man. And there's proof. You can go to the Middle East and look at some of the things that 4,000 years ago were moved by this man. And, you know, cranes can't move it. It's still there on the top of a hill cliff. You know, the whole gate. <laughs> it's a huge gate, too. It's not some tiny little thing. And cranes can't move it. But a man moved it. So... You know, and he said the honeycomb, he gave it to his parents, and he said it was good for them. So, 
Solomon being the wisest man on earth, if you look at his riches, and I point out to most people who think they're wealthy, I say, can you afford to have 300 wives? Their own schools, their own religion churches, their own servants, their maids, take care of their children, they yeah. had all their own properties. That's just the wives he had. He also had 700 concubines, 700 girlfriends. And on top of that, what he owned, military, he controlled from Jerusalem to the northern part of India. All of that under him, one man's control. I mean, basically, he had what no person could even imagine today. And, you know, he says the honeycomb is for the marrow of the bones. I mean, he never saw the same woman if he had sex three times a day for a whole year. Just think about it. Thousand, thousand women at his beck and call. Wow. Well, <laughs> so uh, you've got to have outside. some physical wow. stamina, right? Okay. I mean, you can't just be anybody. So he, he thanked the creator for, his, for the knowledge of the roots and the trees, right? The wisdom he had. And he talks about wow. seeking wisdom. Always seek wisdom. So that mentality has been in my brain. If you show me something I feel is wise, I'm going to take that and I'm going to hang on to it and I'm never going to throw it away aside because through wisdom and search for wisdom, that's how I ended up meeting Teresa and Master Wu. I was seeking for wisdom, knowledge, right? And so all every part of my life, I've been doing the same thing, seeking for knowledge and wisdom. And now I've explained to you basically how I eat, that not necessarily will that work for every individual. Every person that deals with me, I treat you as an individual snowflake. There's no two the same. So what I see going on in your blood or in your life and what you explain to me what the situation is, I'm going to help you deal with that and show you an idea of how to accomplish that through doing certain things that you're going to need to actually do some work for yourself. I can't hold you by the hand and direct you all day. I want you to start doing for yourself. If you're not willing to do that, then nobody can help you. Exactly. So, right. thank you, Gary. So, while wow, you're giving us a lot of uh, knowledge and uh, lots of expertise, uh, all the research you've done, there's a lot of giving that you've, uh, you have supplied. Thank you very much. Well, the knowledge, the knowledge came to me because I searched for it, but yeah. do I own it? No. We you can't. Just who, happy. who can you who can you buy? Who can you buy this knowledge from? You can't. It's only through your studying and diligence that you acquire this wisdom, right? Yeah, you have to use them. You can learn, but you don't use them, so it become no use, right? Well, exactly. there's a principle in the Old Testament: yeah. you lose what you don't use. Yeah. So, well, I <laughs> also learned something uh, from you. Uh, there's a couple years ago, uh, we went to uh, Gary's farm and look at how he, uh, how he run his farm and then where's, where's the weeds that he eat and that. But then when I come home, I'm just collecting weeds and I still have weeds in my cupboard. So I put in a salad like you. So and then we also uh, videotape our uh, one day visit at his farm. So the school has that video uh, if you want a copy of that too. And then Gary's book is uh, very special, you know, a person like this wrote a book that he believes is, of course, like this, right? So, and then, uh, and then we can find you at your website, right? Yeah, Gary at Gary, uh, well, my email address is Gary at GaryTebow.com, or you go to GaryTebow.com, you'll see my webpage, and then there's links to YouTube yeah. and Facebook, so you can find me, and... Um, a lot, most of the stuff that's on YouTube, I didn't even install it. Other people have put it there. Um, you can see different videos about me and stuff that I do. But what you see online is only scraping the surface. Um, even in my book, I, you know, I'm in the process of writing a book series called Eat by Seasons. There will be five books. Uh, the first one will talk about Aboriginal culture and why we did certain things. Uh, and how, uh, following nature and why there's certain teachers in nature that we uh, d used specifically. And then the other four books will show people what I do in each season. I'm in the process of doing that. And I started doing that a few years, about three years ago. And the biggest thing is taking all the pictures at the right times, you know, because for each book you need pictures from that season. 
and that's taken me a lot of time and I'm kind of independent. I like to do things in a, a reality, not, you know, a picture taken out of context and it's glossy and perfect because when you go out in nature you can't see that perfect plant but you can see the plant in real so I kind of do things and take my time so that people can really understand it, right? Yeah, we look forward to uh, seeing your book. So. Oh, there'll be five yeah. more. So, so we are we okay for the evening now? Whatever. Do we cover the things that is uh, uh, important? Is there anything in the in here that uh, hasn't you know been expressed? You know, uh, we always have messages, right? Well, I don't know if there's any other questions you want to ask me or direct me in the point. That's it's up to you. <laughs> I'm <laughs> well, very, I'm very I easy. <laughs> I, we are, I know I'm easy too. We just know each other so long, just like an old friend, really. So, so he, I would say, um, so there's a lot of, uh, let's say there are lots of special people, even in the conference, you know, a different therapists and that. Sometimes you follow your feelings, really. I would say, if you find that person is the one that connects with you very well, so that person could be the one that you go to, right? So it's not, sometimes not exactly, do they know or do they not know? So, so we don't actually have to know if they know or not know. So for me, it's like, if I feel right with somebody, then that person will help me. But if I don't feel it's right, that means it's, the energy don't match, right? Because I, will, I sometimes would say, um, uh, I would say the worst doctor will heal people because somehow you may for you maybe it's terrible, but that person just worked click, and then, and then just did the perfect job for you. So the thing is, it's not what is good and what's not good. Um, follow the feeling, right? If you feel very connected with Gary, then go for it, right? So there are other therapists around. You felt great, then go for it. So because these people, I have. Um, I said I, I'm interviewing them. I know them. That's why they're here. So they're not just anyone. They are. I would say they're real people that care. Well, I would add something to that. That I would say very simply, that um, everything in our lives is put in our path for a reason, mm -hmm. and we're continuously being tested. Yes. And. You know, I look at life this way. If I had ultimate power, would I just give it to anyone? How would I know their character? And what would they do with that power? The only way I could do it is actually seeing how they handle all the different challenges. And then I would make a judgment on basically on the reactions to the challenges and the attitude. And I remember watching a program when I was a young boy called Front Page Challenge and Gordon Sinclair said, bring me someone who has attitude and I can teach them anything. But without attitude, I can't teach them nothing. And so I was a very wealthy person who had lots of businesses and he understood that attitude was the thing that you needed for, in order for you to succeed. And today, a lot of people don't have this positive attitude because they haven't been taught that they're valuable. Uh, everybody has value. No matter how simple-minded or simple they think they are, we all have value. And we're all superstars. We just need to learn how to express it. Yeah. So, yeah, all the difficult things in life, they are uh, good lessons, really. Yes. Uh, but, then, but then when you're walking through it, it wasn't very easy. Uh, I am walking and he's walking different and then you may be different but then uh, that's why we do Qigong because Qigong actually put us in the space that help us to rebalance easier so when we deal with the life challenges it feels a lot easier so that's how it has helped me to be who I am and it was a big part of Gary too that is basically here all the time at the time but how one uh, used the Qi to build that courage that you could heal people or you can do this and then, then you become that give you that I would say that wings to fly to the next step. I agree with that. The you science know, the science family. behind the yeah. science behind Qi Kong is real science. You have to understand um, the practitioners of Kung Fu and and uh, Tai Chi Chuan and Tai Chi from the very beginning understood that through the practice of an art form 
and a self-defense form, uh, they actually saw, you know, from nature, teaching themselves and actually teaching others that breath was part of the situation and understanding that their body got power and they could transmit that power into somebody else to help them. And so I was blessed meeting Master Wu and learning what I've learned and been blessed by Teresa as well. And you know, so you don't know in life where you're going to end up and how you're going to get there. But as long as you have the attitude to, and open your mind to learn, uh, you move forward. And you'll move forward much easier than everyone else around you. Uh, you know, something I've been paying attention to for a, quite a long time now, and I was reminded of this uh, recently. I heard this man speak about this. He said financially in life, he he was never successful and he just couldn't seem to move ahead no matter what he tried schooling education programs everything and one day a friend of his said I'm gonna challenge you to something he said there's 30 chapters in the book of Proverbs which is the book that Solomon wrote about wisdom he said I'm gonna challenge you to read one chapter every day of the week wow. so it's gonna take you 30 days to read the whole thing but you're gonna do it for the next two years so every month you're gonna reread the same book 12 wow. times okay. and you're gonna do it for two years and he said at the, at the end of two years you'll be a millionaire and the man said I'm gonna take that challenge up and he did it and he ended up being a multi-millionaire at the end of two years so because he didn't chase the money he followed the wisdom and by following the wisdom wealth came because like Solomon said if you chase money you'll grow wings and fly away that's a fact the more you chase money, the less you have. The least you chase the money, the more you have. I've proven that too. It's, it's, see, so I can apply the energy work and she come to a lot of areas of my life, but I also apply wisdom with it, right? You have to use, why try to invent the wheel when somebody already made it? It's perfect already. Why, why are you going to try to reinvent the wheel? It's been done. Exactly. Just follow the rules. <laughs> yeah, so we understand that... that um, yeah, but you see, I'm explaining understand. it very simple very nice. in a very simple uh, terminology yes. because if you make it complicated... It's not going to work. Right. It's yeah. like, you know, I was watching a man teach a young boy algebra next door. Yeah. And mathematics and these high-level things, I hated them when I was in school. I didn't like them yeah. because it's complicated for what? Why it doesn't do you, need to you don't be. Really need them. You, yeah. you, I've never used it yet. I could figure out anything, right? That I've ever wanted to do. And I grew up in a household where my father had like very little education, but his brain was like a, a number machine. He he could tell you if you cut pieces of wood to build a house, how many saw cuts were there in the entire house, and how many boards you lost from the sawdust. It was mind-bending that he could, and he was right. He would know instantly. Like, you know, just you'd ask him a question, how much is this in size and everything, and he would give you the answer, write it down, boom, there it is. And no matter how you tried to prove it, yet he had no formal training that was built into his brain, right, that he could see that. Everybody has gifts and talents. That's why I say everybody has a purpose, right? Most people do not appreciate other people's talents. They don't, and I find that's a big mistake. You you can learn from anyone. So everybody has value. So okay, thank you so much. Um, just beautiful. Uh, so uh, by the way, if somebody yes. wants to get in touch, we, my phone number is four one six seven zero nine three five three five. Hey, like Donald Trump says, if you don't toot your own horn, nobody's going to do it for you. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, I think we, we learned something today. So thank you very much. It was really a pleasure having you. So hi, so bye, and I'll uh, see you in another episode.